Hello everyone, welcome back um, for another short video on foreign affairs. I am your host from the OLP channel, like I said, foreign affairs segment. And of course, uh, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict continues to be making the headlines. But there are some interesting headlines uh, coming out that might be some food for thought. And uh, I want to highlight uh, some of those. I mean, uh, I pretty much said the bulk of what I think about the subject. Uh, my mind hasn't changed. I do think uh, decades of occupation and uh, apartheid and daily violence can only bring about something like this. And so... I would just like to uh, to point out that uh, it's some some aspects of this whole thing are indeed strange, and one of them I've mentioned before, which is the the media and the special social media offensive that we see on behalf of Israel, trying to portray them as the victim and again i have to again point out that i am not in favor i condemned uh, the atrocities violence on against humans from any side and so it's not uh, it's not that i'm just um, blaming or or uh, taking uh, a blind a one-sided, the blinded, one-sided uh, argument, but uh, we have to be objective. Uh, aggressions against civilians are unacceptable. That's period. And so, but uh, if we look at the history, we know that how this has been done daily to the Palestinian people. Nevertheless, we know the violence goes on, we know collateral happens, we know that sometimes intentional violence also happens. And uh, in this case, Israel is intentionally, has intentionally dropped 6,000 bombs in six days over Gaza. If you see the size of the territory of Gaza, you can imagine, or maybe you can't, because neither can I, uh, Imagine how is to live under that rain of bombs, uh, some of them bunker busters. And uh, not just that, but then people that are wounded and need help, they, are, they have increased difficulties since the siege uh, uh, was announced. Uh, in those sharp words by the by the defense minister of Israel, uh, naming the Palestinians as uh, branding them as human animals, I think it was the right words he used. This is not uh, this this doesn't come. This is not like words coming out of rage. This is this is the, the normal stance, according as far as I concern. So, but. Uh, a lot of these claims on behalf of Israel, sorry for me ranting a little bit too much, uh, tell the famous story, I'm sure you have seen this one repeated, the, the, the 40 beheaded children, right? I, I'm sure that by now, if you're interested in this subject and you go through social media or the news, you have seen, you have heard about this story, right? Um, I follow this, uh, uh, the Mint Press News, which is also a news agency. I followed them on Instagram and they uh, posted today, um, uh, they made a post today that um, debunking some of these uh, allegations of uh, Hamas violence towards, uh, towards Israelis. I will, uh, I mean, it's up to you to believe or not, but it's nevertheless interest interesting to point this out okay so let's go through them four stories about gaza that turned out to be fake it says 
And so the first one, uh, is, uh, it says there it was claimed that Israeli soldier Shani Lok was raped and killed by Palestinian fighters. It turns out she's alive and in a hospital in Gaza. And then you have this one, the most famous one. Hamas kills 40 babies and children, beheading some of them at Israeli kibbutz report. They claim, Mint Press claims this is false. Israeli army, because of the statements done by Israeli army apparently, Israeli army says it does not have confirmation about allegations that Hamas beheaded babies. This is claimed to, to be said by Israeli army spokesman uh, over the phone and uh, so they confirm that they have no information about this. It's easy to spread this kind of stories, by the way. It's very easy to spread. It's to, I've talked about this before. It's this kind of uh, excess emotions used in propaganda. This is, I, I, I believe this is well studied in psychology to catch the eye of the most distracted person. <laughs> So this is another famous story. This uh, Israeli woman at music festival raped next to bodies of murdered friends. Also, Mint Press News claimed that this is false. Uh, and uh, and and because the, the the this girl is uh, is still alive, and it's this is revealed by uh, her mother. And then you have this one, uh, a pregnant woman in southern Israel was found by Hamas terrorists. They d dissected her body, her stomach was cut open and they took the fetus out with an umbilical cord, this rather a visual description, and let the unborn child die slowly out of his mother's womb. This is what inhuman savages of Hamas do to people. Take notice of the last sentence, because that says the intention of the claim, right? And so, and uh, they found out that the the picture was actually a report uh, of the Sabra and Shatila massacre of Palestinian people by Israel in 1982. There's no proof the same has been done by Hamas to Israeli women. Yeah, and then you have this uh, alleged footage of Hamas keeping children in cages. And uh, the guy that tweets this out, uh, what is the perfect of this? Are they Israeli hostages? Uh, and the guy then also uh, comments that they are, they are Palestinian children being held in cages by Israeli law enforcement slash army officials he corrects in his following post so uh my question is why the propaganda offensive if we draw parallels we uh we can find similarities between the same was done, for example, when we are talking about the Ukrainian, the Russian-Ukrainian conflict. The same is done by the West, uh, Ukraine and the West, uh, towards Russia. Very false claims of everything and anything, and then many of them turn out to be untrue, or at least to be uh, not uh, proven. And. Uh, this goes to say that this indicates uh, a broader intention or at least something all this news and probably many of them fake i'm not i'm everything i'm uh, stating now myself i have doubts i reserve also always a space on the back of my head to doubts they somehow Hypothetically, I mean, we, we are just uh, crossing uh, information, so we, uh, we, we all make mistakes. But this is what it seems to me, so that uh, 
this kind of offensive, the information offensive, it's been understood to be as important as the military offensives. I mean, the Russians have been very bad at it in the Ukrainian uh, affair. Uh, and it has to be planned as well. Planned in advance. This takes me to the next story, which is Israel knew, or at least it was warned uh, days before from the attack. This is claimed by, um, uh, let me see, let me just give me a sec to check here. Okay, this is this was actually reported by the BBC. And uh, the title goes, Egypt warned Israel days before Hamas struck, US committee, chairman says. So, so this is, of course, the, Benjamin Netanyahu, if you just research the story, I'm not going to lose much time reading it, but just research it and read it yourself, cross the information. Benjamin Netanyahu called it fake news. I will just read a little bit. So, uh, House Representatives Foreign Affairs Committee head Michael McCall told reporters of the alleged warning. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu de described the report as absolutely false. Israel intelligence services are under scrutiny for their failure to prevent the deadliest attack by Palestinian militants in Israel's 75-year-old history. We know that Egypt uh, has warned the Israelis three days prior that an event like this could happen, Mr. McCall told reporters following a closed-door intelligence briefing on Wednesday for lawmakers about the Middle East crisis, according to EFP news agency. I don't want to get too much into classified, but a warning was given, the Texas Republican added. I think the question was at what level it was given. Okay, you can go on and research it and read the, the rest of it. Uh, I just wanted to say because I, I have to soon, I gotta go to work and so I can't make this too long. But I wanted to, to read a piece, an article written by a friend of mine called Russell Bentley. He's also a well-known fighter is uh, is from Texas. He went to fight on behalf of the DPR army. He stayed there. He lives there, and he, he got he has his roots there now, and uh, he is very active uh, in the in the information space. And uh, I I do I consider these words quite uh, how can I say it uh, correct and uh, wise. I think that's the word. And I just, I, I'm going to, uh, I mean, I'm going to finish this video with this text, if you allow me. The Israeli ambassador to America said the events of the recent days are Israel's September 11, drawing a parallel between the Hamas attack and the bombing of the Twin Towers. We remember the subtext of the story with the towers, the version that this was the work of American intelligence service has become widespread. Having said this phrase, the American ambassador instantly evoked the corresponding, the corresponding associations in me, but I did not go deeper. At that moment, too little time had passed to fall into conspiracy theories. The events of the September 11th resulted in very loud steps and significant changes in the world affairs. Yeah, it seems to me that this is more than, more than what meets the eye. Judging by Israel's actions, it is also ready to provoke an avalanche. 6,000 bombs in six days, I remind you. But does he understand the consequences? We are waging a war on historical territory. But outside post-destruction Russia, this is, to some extent, dampens our mistakes. Giving up Kherson means not giving up Smolensk. Israel risks incurring in wrath 
from all sides, which leaves it little chance of surviving without outside help. But even if help arrives, you will have to fight on your own territory, and this is painful. We have been fighting Ukrainian radicalism for more than nine years now. Radicalism of any nationality is alien to us by definition. Be it Arab or Jewish, the Arabs committed atrocities without caring what our world thought of them. Jews don't seem to care much about our opinions either. Well, everyone pays for their own mistakes themselves, but at different prices. I leave you with these words, <laughs> these thoughts from uh, Russell Bentley. We just hope that Israel doesn't have the intention of, uh, within the geopolitical frame of being cooking something bigger, or at least provoking it, or at least itching to have the... Uh, had, <laughs> we just hope it hasn't been itching so far, waiting for this opportunity to unleash what it is unleashing now. So, yeah, that's all for me today. Thank you very much, and until the next one. You know, the same music as always, The Broken Record. Please subscribe, please share my work. This is all done in <laughs> the little time I have spare from other affairs. And yeah, just subscribe and share, I mean, it doesn't cost anything. Thank you very much.